Meanwhile, as the House here in Washington lays out its bill for police reform, Black Caucus Chair Congresswoman Karen Bass has tweeted, we need to ban chokeholds, not study them. We need to ban no-knock warrants, not study them. The people demand action. And joining me now is Congresswoman Bass. Uh, given the divide, Congresswoman, between your legislation and what the Senate is proposing, how do you, uh, how do you get anything done? Well, I'm certainly hoping that we will be able to do that because just as you showed, there are hundreds of people out there in New York City and thousands of people across the country. I think the worst thing that we could do right now would be to do superficial, symbolic legislation. People want to see specific change. And, you know, part of the bill calls for upgrading policing, accreditation, national standards, uh, assistance that I believe will help make our police departments better. Great conversations with the Paternal Order of Police uh, National Union, and they support the accreditation and the increasing of the standards. Uh, but the Senate is talking about taking this at a whole different level, studying it, uh, looking at all of these issues, and time is running out. There's a July 4th recess starting July 2nd, and then only one week uh, before the August recess. Right. Well, you know what? We're not really sure what our calendar is because of COVID. So I, I'm not sure that we will even have an August recess uh, because we have so much work that needs to be done. We need to pass the HEROES Act in the Senate because unemployment is running out. But I think people have been on the streets for almost 30 days in a row, and it would be shameful for us not to act. So I am hopeful. You know that the there's two Senate bills. There's the bill of Senator Scott. There's also the Harris Booker bill, which, do, which uh, duplicates ours. I've spoken to Senator Scott. I'm going to continue talking to him. And so I remain hopeful. I don't want this to be one of those other bills that goes over to the Senate and there's no action. 70% of the American people believe that we need to act. And I am very positive that we need to do that. And I hope the Senate will move. And one sign of change may be that uh, I know there's legislation from a number of your fellow Democrats in the Senate to make Juneteenth a national holiday. 47 states acknowledge Juneteenth in one way or another. But now Senator Cornyn from Texas is talking about it. And it was Texas, Galveston, of course, which was the, the last uh, confirming moment to let uh, slaves then slaves know two years after the Emancipation Proclamation that they were indeed free. Right. I was, I was very happy to hear that. I learned that uh, a couple of hours ago. I think that's, that's major progress. We have a bill over here. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee has a bill to make Juneteenth a holiday. And I think, you know, the country is going through a real collective lesson. Because, Andrea, you know one of our problems is, is that we know very little about our own history. Most people don't realize that the period of enslavement lasted 256 years. And even after the Emancipation Pro Proclamation, Proclamation. People came up with ways to re-enslave people. And so this is a, a part of our history that we need to reckon with. And until we reckon with it, it'll be difficult for people to understand why we continue to have the racial conflicts today that are because of the lack of understanding of history and inaction for so many years. Karen Bass, thank you so much, Congresswoman. It was great to see you today. Thanks, and stay Thank in touch as the progress continues on trying to come up with a compromise.